I'd like to introduce our next panelist, uh, Cormac Cullinan. Thank you very much, Shannon. Um, yesterday, the 16th of June, is a, a really important day in the history of my country. It was the day when the young people of South Africa spontaneously stood up to the apartheid government of the time and said, we do not wish to be taught in the language of the oppressor in, Af in Afrikaans. We do, we do no longer accept the system which is being imposed, of, imposed upon us. And those protests by a few uh, brave young people swelled to a full-scale uprising which had re reverberations which eventually changed my country into a democracy. But what we are dealing with here in the world today is a much more insidious form of apartheid. Apartheid means separateness, and um, it can mean, in the South African instance, a separation between black people and white people. But what we are dealing with here on the planet is this fundamentally misconceived belief that we humans are separate from and superior to nature. And it's the same kind of terrible thinking which led to the distortions and the exploitation of apartheid. But it, it is now driving the destruction of all that we hold valuable in this world. And this is why the Universal Declaration of the Rights of Mother Earth is so important. There are times in history when people must come together and say the way we have behaved in the past is no longer acceptable. One such time was after the horrors of the First World War, where the nations of the world came together and adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now this was a non-binding document, but it was a document which articulated people's ethical beliefs as to what was an acceptable standard of human behavior. And as you all know, human rights has had an enormous impact in shaping the world. And I suggest to you that the Universal Declaration of the Rights of Mother Earth is such a document, but a document for our times. And why is it an important document? Well, firstly, it's a people's document. This is a document which came up from the, the grassroots. It is, a, it is about people's leadership, people's leadership for Earth democracy. And by leadership, I mean doing. I mean not making fancy pronouncements, but actually working together to achieve something. And as Vandana Shiva has taught us in her book, Earth Democracy, we have to expand the concept of democracy because our primary allegiance is not to the, to the nation state, which is a, a creation. Our primary allegiance is to Earth. We are Earthlings. The common ground that unites us is beneath our feet. The Universal Declaration is also a strong document. It is not some watered down, wishy-washy compromise after hours of horse trading and, and, and deal making in the rooms of international negotiation. It is a document which says what needs to be said, not the best that could be achieved under the circumstances. It is a document with very deep roots. It is rooted in the indigenous perspectives of the world from, from all over the, the globe, in the very deep wisdom traditions which our species have developed over time. It is also a document which is quite frankly based on a far better and more accurate model of reality than that that informs the, the green economy, etc. Because science tells us, ecology, quantum physics, whichever area you want to look at, that we are an integral and an inseparable part of this whole. This idea that, that we can adopt this colonial mentality as well as done in South Africa, that we are separate from and superior to the rest of the community, is madness and it's just incorrect. It also addresses the core issues. You can't have a conversation about the Universal Declaration which, without getting to the deep issues, which is our dysfunctional relationship with Mother Earth. We don't have to have this discussion about what is most important for us in the language of the oppressor, in the language of the market or parts per million. We want to have this discussion about deep ethical values and about what we believe in and what we hold most dear. And this document is also the DNA of an ecologically sustainable and socially just society. Because if you try and give effect to that document, you will inevitably begin the process of changing your society in deep and fundamental ways. And perhaps more importantly at this time, it provides us with a common manifesto. It provides us the many people and organizations and, and individuals all over the world who are striving for the, the real future that we want. It provides them with an articulation of what we believe in, which has come from the people and which has been taken forward by the people. And this will be implemented in many ways throughout the world. For example, in South Africa, we have drawn on our own traditions. In 1955, at the height of apartheid, people came together and imagined a society 
that was free of apartheid, imagined the future they wanted, and they formulated the Freedom Charter through a process of discussion throughout the country. And the conversation at the height of apartheid, when it must have looked completely improbable that you could ever overthrow the state, about a kind of amazing free democracy that you could have, galvanized the people. And that Freedom Charter was an incredibly important document in the future of our country in the change. And we are now working on a People's Charter for Africa, which will take the values of the Universal Declaration and apply them from an African perspective, drawing on African philosophies to take it forward. So ladies and gentlemen, I suggest to you that what you are seeing now is the early stages of a momentous change in society. The pipe of the formal UN negotiations is blocked. We cannot get the dramatic change that we need to save our humanity and societies through these official channels. But, but if you block a river, the river cuts a new path. And what you are seeing here is this early stages of a people's movement cutting a new path to a better future for us all.